Hey, what's up? This is Matt, and I wanted to do this quick Periscope with you guys because there's something big that I see a lot of customers make, a big mistake that a lot of customers make when they come in to ConvertKit because it's such a different mindset shift in how you're going to use and organize your subscribers that it just can be really tough to get used to, and that's what I want to help you with today. So what is the number one mistake that I see people make with ConvertKit, and it's this. Too many people start treating their tags in ConvertKit like they are the new lists, okay? So a lot of you are coming over from MailChimp or Aweber, and you're used to lists. You're used to different lists for different interests and having to create a new list, and that's where everybody lives, but that's not the case inside of ConvertKit because subscribers can come through and they can be in a form. They can be in a tag, and you're going to be importing your subscribers from lists in your old provider into tags and convert it. So I can totally see where kind of the confusion comes from in treating lit in treating tags like the new list, but you don't have to do that. So the number one mistake that I see people make when they're coming over to ConvertKit is treating tags like they're the new list. So that brings up the question, like, what do you do instead? So if tags are not supposed to be used like lists, then like how are forms used? And biggest thing, like, what's what's the deal with segments? What are we supposed to do with segments? So it's a really good question and something that I want to help you with. Uh, so this is what you should do instead. Think of tags and forms. I want you to think of them this way. Tags and forms are very similar but different ways of organizing your subscribers inside of ConvertKit, okay? So tags and forms are ways of organizing the subscribers, and segments are ways that you organize the tags and forms, okay? Does that make sense? Because think of it like this, all right? If I ran a dessert shop, then I would have a segment of ice cream, okay? Segment of ice cream. And each tag or form could be representative of a different flavor of ice cream. So I'd have chocolate chip, Rocky Road, mint chocolate chip, vanilla, regular chocolate. So each of those could be a tag or a form because it's a way of identifying a certain entry point or interest for that subscriber. And I also kind of think of them this way, like forms and landing pages are ways that subscribers have taken direct action to come in to your site, okay, into your list, right? Forms are ways that people can take direct action, those forms and landing pages, whereas tags, a lot of times people are added to tags based on indirect action. So maybe they purchased a product or they were imported or they had a click to, you know, a click to tag interest that you set up in the email. So that's another way that I think about it. Forms are based on direct interest, or forms are based on direct action, and tags are more based on indirect action. So what's the deal with segments? Okay, so I like to think of segments actually as like boxes or buckets that organize those forms and tags. So if you're gonna have you know, this big segment box, I don't know how well this is gonna show up on the periscope. So, we got this box that's a segment, and say like, uh, so I do a lot of sketch notes. So I can never talk and spell. All right, so I have this segment of interest, and I have this segment of people that I want to contact about sketch notes. And so I have this sketch note box, and what I want to put in this sketch note box are people who are tagged based on being interested in the sketch note, or they are tagged because they bought a course or a product. So I've got those two tags. Those are going to go, both of those are going to go into the sketch note segment, right? And then I've also got a, a form, you know, after, an after post form that goes, and so those are people that are like, hey, come into the free course or learn more about SketchNet. So I've got that form, and then I've also got a landing page for my free email course on SketchNotes. Okay? Obviously those people are interested. So I've got some tags, I've got some land, I've got a landing page, and I've got these forms, and they all go into the SketchNotes segment. So now whenever I want to send a broadcast to people who are specifically interested in sketch notes, 
all I have to do in broadcast is select this one sketch note segment from the broadcast filter settings. Okay, that's all I have to do. What I don't need to do is, you know, say have this bit, this you know, like single master sketch note tag. All right, I don't need to do this because that's what the segment, and the segment's just a lot more powerful because you only have to add in new things to the segment. If you are, say, talking about trying to like set up automation rules, which is what I see most of the time, is people are saying like, okay, well, I've got this new form, I've got to set up an automation rule to send it to my master tag that I sent to. So this will, as you can probably tell, this is gonna result in just so many automation rules because every time you create a form or a landing page, you're just gonna get a ton more uh, you're just going to keep adding automation rules, and that can be that can really add up very fast. So that's the biggest thing that I want you to take away from this short video is think about sketches or <laughs> think about the segments as ways to organize those forms and tags. And the forms and tags are different but similar ways of organizing the subscribers themselves. And I like to think of forms as taking direct action, and I like to think of tags as ways that people have taken indirect actions to join my list, that bigger, that bigger convert kit list. Okay, I hope that was really helpful. We're going to be doing more of these, so uh, keep keep uh, subscribe to us on Periscope, and just follow us if you're using if you're using Scope, or make sure you follow us on Twitter, and you'll get to you'll keep seeing more of these. We're going to try and add them to our YouTube channel as well. So hope you're digging them. We also do, or I also do, uh, actually happening in about 20 minutes, a 3 p.m. Eastern every Thursday getting started workshop. If you want to know more about ConvertKits, totally free. Yeah, there's no pressure to sign up. If you just want to see a lot more of the guts of ConvertKit, go to convertkit.com forward slash learn. All right, let me go ahead and write that down. Can someone tell me if this like, actually shows up Backwards to you. Um, now I'm running out of space. ConvertKit.com forward slash learn. Okay? Alright, everybody. Thanks so much, and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye.